we're live. Hello everyone, welcome to True Zero Emissions. And we have a, a bench grinder. And this is a magnet from an 18 inch speaker. Cameron, would you like to? Proof. Proof that it's a <laughs> It is a magnet. <laughs> um, what do we got going on here? It's not centered, right? Yeah. Okay, so, but our plan is what? Spin it? Our plan is to spin it. This turns at, okay, so what model is this? This is just, uh, oh, I can't read everything on this. Speed, this turns at 3,450 RPMs. Just by, okay, oh, well, the phone's plugged in now. Let me plug this in just so we can show it turn a little bit, yeah? Is that okay? Oh yeah, go ahead. And then they, everyone can see how unbalanced it is. And that's because this is a speaker magnet, which was not made for spinning, but we're spinning it because uh, Bruce De Palma researched um, Michael Faraday, and I don't recall the exact year at the moment, but um, Bruce De Palma, you can look up Bruce De Palma, and he, he replicated and expanded on something that was discovered long before, um, long before, long, long ago. And uh, that is when you spin a magnet, you can get energy from, and what I understand is, the center shaft and the outer end of the magnet, right here, just by spinning it. So, now this is not balanced, but let's see, let's see what happens. Uh, it's off right now. Let's see what happens. What are we on with the meter here? What is our We settings? are on VDC. Volts DC. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what Nothing's happens. Nothing's happening right now, but... So, so now. right now it's at zero, at zero. Well, it's showing one point. point. Okay, it's, it's fluctuating, but it's between 1.5 and zero. Uh, millivolts? Millivolts. Okay. okay. So let's see. Look at that change. Is that 10, 17 volts? That's, yeah, we're in millivolts still. Oh, millivolts, okay. But it's, yeah, we're getting a reading here. You can see the energy is there. Look at that. There's energy there. Now this is, we want to spin this at least 3,000 RPMs. And from what I recall about the N-Sheen, is it's approximately 1.2 volts for every 1,000 RPMs that you spin the magnet. And it can be one magnet, like a speaker magnet, or it can be lots of magnets all together. And you can just research Bruce De Palma's, um, uh, everything he learned, he shares openly. And it's on YouTube, and uh, he also has a website. So every thousand RPMs is producing approximately 1.2 volts, additional volts. So um, we're just, we just wanted to see what we can do with spinning a magnet. So we thought this would be a good way to do it. Let's show how we got this. Oh, we're going to be taking this apart because we're going to we want to try to balance this a little better. Mm -hmm. um, so we used hose, just hose within hose. But this is one of the hoses. Hose. Um, Cameron, would you? Oh yeah, so this is a bicycle tube or a scooter tube. So we put that over the hose. And we we just put this, all these together. We just used hoses and cut them and put them together. And we used um, a hose cutter. That's a hose cutter. Yeah. That cuts the hose, That's so. and um, and then we um, use the grinder. Uh, Cameron also used the cutter, the grinder, to uh, uh, cut the hose and trim the hose as well, as needed. Right, Cameron? Yes. The fine, fine trimmings, um, and then we use WD-40 to slide the hoses together, and that helped with. Uh, being able to slide the hoses within one another because it was sometimes that was a very difficult challenge and we were able to achieve that process with uh, just um, using WD-40. And it seems like since it's a speaker magnet it may not necessarily be built to rotate and be symmetrical like that so if you can see here the distance between this 
aluminum ground piece that I believe is epoxy, epoxy to the magnet, you know, it's got a gap of a quarter inch to, you know, three eighths of an inch, where what we want to do is we want to figure out the high spot here. We want to cut out some of our spacer so that this outer part spins and, you know, is a lot more aligned. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to find the high spot and mark it on this magnet so that we can cut part of the spacer in here so that we can align it. So I'm going to hold this pen here and see when it touches. Touch, touch, touch. And I'm going to mark where it starts to touch and where it ends touching and I'm going to average those out and that's going to be my send point. So switching now to, no, not switching to that, switching to the fingernail. It's touch, it's touch, okay. Begins touching there. Ends touching about there. I'm going to average it out to this center. So I'm going to call this the area that we need to trim some of our uh, gasket, some of our hose out of, so that we can, uh, basically this will drop down and when, when we recenter it, this will be lower. So I say we take this off. Yeah. And we had figured out our, our way where... Hey, let me get a rag for this. Yeah, first oh of yeah, all. Here's, here's the rag. No, no, use that one for your, or let me get a, another one. Cool, cool, one. yeah, oh. another rag, cool. Yeah. Here, use the, this this one for your knee. I'm actually, I'm even upping my technology with this chair here. So now I'm gonna have chair, have a couple of rags, and so I'm gonna wanna loosen this. If you wanna hold that, mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Leave that on and just spin the magnet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now just spin it and it'll come off. Okay, that's off. Okay. So we need to unscrew this guy, I guess. It, can we hold the other side of this, like with your vice grip or something, and then we unscrew this? Uh, I can't get or it in there. Hold this thing? Yeah. I'll try holding the. <laughs> the magnet is so strong, That's a it strong just magnet. stuff jumps onto it. It's like, it's as though the physics rules of the world change when you have these big magnets around because all of a sudden gravity doesn't go straight to the center of the earth anymore. Gravity goes to this magnet. Yeah, I like When that. you've got ferrous metals around. Okay, I, my, I, my thoughts are that we're probably going to have to pull and turn at the same time because the okay. threads, remember there's no threads at the, in, in the beginning of this. But that's not turning, so, okay, so let me see. And let me put more WD-40. Oh yeah, it's working, it's let working. Let me put WD-40 in there. Yeah, it doesn't take much because uh, it's already moving, so, cool. Let's try to keep WD-40 off on it. Yeah, good, yeah. okay, good, sure. All right, so yeah, this is coming off nicely, so we don't have to wrestle too badly with it. Wow, very nice. Folks at home, if you want to watch my YouTube channel, it is Camoto, C-A-M space M-O-T-O, and I do electric scooter repairs, how to fix your brakes on your scooter and stuff like that. Yeah, and if there's videos that people want to see, they can request too, right? Yeah, if it's something I can do. It depends on which, you know, right now, I, the scooters I own are Ninebot Max, Dualtron Raptor 2, and all-wheel drive M365. So if they want videos based on those, yeah, um, it's possible. That's off. There we go. So we are going to... I think we want to trim out... Just something from there. Do we want to get our drill and just thrash into it? Do we want to pop out this hose? What do you think, Joseph? So are you thinking that I can drill a hole in between two hoses and that would relieve pressure yes. on one side? I could drill a couple holes to relieve pressure on one side and then... I believe it so much I'm going to get my drill.
you think? Worth trying? I'm thinking about this. Okay. So how do you <laughs> hold Even it? my drill gets sucked up. Okay, so where was the high point? High point is here. So I basically drill a hole right... Um, because that's going to make it a lot... That'll make it... Right there is where I drill a hole. Just so it climbs over that way a little bit. So my thoughts are we should probably... Okay, how big of a gap... How, how much does this move? What is the range that it moves? The range. Oh, the range is pretty... F uh, the range was like a whole quarter inch of wiggle. You know, so honestly, it's... Now that you asked that question... Yes. Because that's one of our things. Yeah, now that you asked that question, we I... We want to know that. We really do want this piece to be that way, like an eighth inch. Okay, a we question. To... I have a question. Yeah, yeah. If it's a quarter inch higher mm -hmm. on this side, to have it perfectly centered, would that be dividing the quarter inch into two, or is it moving yep. it a whole quarter inch That's over? why I turned a quarter inch into an eighth inch. I made it in half because this is up by a quarter inch, but we just need to move this over because... How much? That's how I think, an eighth inch, half of a quarter inch. I think if we take out an eighth inch from over here and this just flops over there, I think that's our best bet. I could be wrong, but my my physics, physics instincts tell me that. Okay, so... We could, hey, what about this? Do you want to measure, what if we had a piece of paper on here and we measured from here to here or we just started drawing lines? Say that one more time, please. Uh, what if we just had a piece of paper on here? Yes. We started drawing lines from the outer edge to the outer edge, outer edge to the outer edge, outer edge to the outer edge. And where those cross will be the very center of this for sure. Let's do it. Let's put I like a hole that. in there and then we see what's going on in here. I'll get the paper. Good, good. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to tear a little circle of paper out of this. Oh, I thought we wanted the whole thing. Um, my idea, well, you'll see in a minute why this is okay. the amount. Um, I need it to be there. I probably have tape nearby. Yeah, tape? I think I think I've got. Okay. Tape right there. Okay, let me... Yeah, if you have any type of tape, be great. I feel like a better title might have been Preparing the End Machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is an appropriate title. I think because it was all together, it felt like we were ready to do it. But then we're like, wait, it's way out of balance. Yeah. <laughs> if we spin this thing fast. We were going to ruin all of the property. So, yeah, part of doing science is doing science again tomorrow. Just try not to ruin our stuff. I like that. Huh? Try not to ruin stuff unnecessarily. Let me give you these for a sec. You know, how amazing was it to see this thing? We were spinning this at what? Very low RPM, very low. Very low. And it was giving us a significant increase in millivolts. Yeah, and it only did it when it spun. Yeah. So, so that
That's consistent with Bruce De Palma's and everyone's um, individual test results, as long as they spin the magnet. Some people didn't spin the magnet, and they're just reading the magnet, and they're, that's different. That's not going to... Mm -hmm. You have to spin it. The Earth spin, solar systems spin, galaxies spin, everything's spinning. The universe mm -hmm. might even spin. I don't know. <laughs> Can I see the piece of paper? I just am going to use it as a flat... I'm interested thing. to know though. I'm interested to know yeah. if the universe itself is spinning. It makes sense that it is. Everything else is. It would not surprise me. Yeah, everything's right. in movement. Everything. So I learned this from As my I old boss, my old nuclear physicist boss, that you can find the center of something if you just draw lines across from the highest point of the outer part of a circle. You just draw several lines, and they're even though each one of these lines is imperfect, once I draw enough of them, the average of the imperfection doesn't matter, and as long as, you know, they're gonna end up crossing in the center. Well, maybe I prove this is right, maybe I don't prove this is right, but I'm going with how I think it works. If we had a big pair of calipers or something, we'd really be able to get this. Yeah, because you need to know where the the longest point is. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, so let me bring the tape measure out. Okay. Cool. Cool. Because for this to work, I think. I mean, what you're saying might be the same thing I'm saying, but I just, in my thoughts. Oh yeah, there, this will be a more accurate way to get center, to get uh, highest and lowest. So I want it there, and then when it lines up on the, when it's longest, lining up with the outside. So where is, where is, there? okay. Then let's go to, you know, here, and see what's longest. And longest based on outside black ring, not this ring. Oh, black I rings. didn't do. I didn't do. Um, let's do it over here. Uh, yeah, we'll do it over. We can do some more lines. It'll. <laughs> okay. All right, I yeah, didn't know you were going ring. to outer ring. Gotcha. I'm glad you said that. That's a good detail. Oh wait, hold up. Let me get this to go on there. Okay. Is it on there? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So right there. Okay. All right. Right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. Whoa, sorry, I'm drawing on your... You just want to make a new, a new measuring system on I, my tape measure. I think what I need to do is get a new piece of paper. <laughs> I don't know if my system's working that good. Okay, so what was the original way we were thinking? Yeah, this isn't working. All right, this this technique sometimes works, uh, but not, well, I, not I like today. the drilling the holes idea. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. Let's to, do that. Let's, let's go back that. to one. Okay, so back to first position. I say we drill right here. We want do it. Yeah. Okay. You, use want. your drill. Do you have it's a quarter inch? Um. I think quarter inch would be too big. I oh, want to use what this, size? I want to use this. What size is that? Size. I don't know, but it looks like eighth inch to me. Let's so. measure it, so we know. Sure. It looks like you're correct. Cool. It looks like you're correct. It looks like. I think it is eighth inch. They say on them, but it 